Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Oh. Oh. I just feel like I let the boys down tonight. It's just bad play. Bad play, so... Um, yeah, it sucks, man. It sucks. It comes down, you know, I feel like it comes down to one play, and, you know, the boys work so hard in the in the third, you know, trying to, you know, kind of kind of pull me, pull us out of that, and, um, you know, I just fell, fell short, but, yeah, I got to be better, and, you know, that starts, uh, that starts uh, for Seattle. Judd's Hockey Show, Matt Dumba saying what we all should say each and every day. We got to be better, including Judd and Declan Goff. Of course, we are what uh, makes up the Score North Judd's Hockey Show. Appreciate all of you who watch and listen to us. And uh, Declan, let's start there. Wild loses 3-2 last night. Plenty to get to as far as the fact that uh, coming off a easy win against a really bad Coyotes team, that the Wild had a really good opportunity probably to win back-to-back games against a Golden Knights team that is without plenty of star power. They did not. But let's start with uh, Dumba, because we touched on him briefly after we did the show following the Coyotes game, because he had a bad giveaway in that game. And that continued a trend that really traces back to the end of October, where Dumba, you know, once or twice per game is making a bad play. And last night at the end of the second period, he made an inexperienced, inexcusably as he reflected there horrendous play that um set up a goal i believe it was riley smith stole the puck in neutral from dumba marcia show scored that made it three rip at the time and the wild comes back and scores two goals in the third um what's your patience here because uh dumba has an a now i think mm-hmm. he's definitely matured as a person no question um i used to be in, in the camp of bench him like scratch him i'm sick of this crap i have adjusted my opinions of him but that being said and by the way i'm not advocating scratching him which they're not going to do for the game tomorrow night in seattle but that being said we are on a streak of of him making plays that have to be considered completely irresponsible and can definitely cost you goals yeah he's gonna have plays like this um i think we said in the last podcast or i said in the last podcast that uh all the positive he brings outweighs those negatives. And if this was a, a different part of his career or maybe um, he wasn't the player that he's become, then yes, I would consider scratching him. But after after a sub- situation like that, no, I, I, I don't I don't scratch him. Um, yeah, it's a bad play for sure. But I mean, the Wild almost were able to overcome it and they rally back. It didn't shipwreck you. And Matt Dumba in general just does a bunch more things that are going to outweigh those. You just remember that one situation because it was it was magnified and because unfortunately he has like this like scarlet letter on him that he's a liability defensively. Is he sound and Jonas Brodin defensively? Obviously not, but he's not as bad as people make him out to be defensively. So um, I think also having self awareness uh, of the situation in his comments there that he feels like he let the team down. Um, for him to recognize that is important because there was a time period where he didn't I think have that self reflection. And wouldn't really be able to own up to something like that. And he does. Um, and I think that says a lot about him. It says a lot about his character. It's why he's an alternate captain now. Um, the room loves him. He's very important to that room. Uh, so, no. It, is it a bad play? Of course. But does it does it warrant me making me more upset at him? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I like where he's... Uh, I like what he's become as a player for the most part. And I realized that he also brings offensive abilities and a slap shot that a lot of his teammates and quite frankly, a lot of defensemen in the national hockey league don't have, but here's my, here's my problem with the latest, um, the latest round of poor plays from him. And, and he needs to get his head around this. He doesn't seem to understand the risk reward scenarios. And by that, I mean, if he's making a really good offensive play and gets caught, So if he's in the zone, which, by the way, I love the fact that the majority of defensemen on this team now jump into plays aggressively, and that's Mm going to cost you sometimes, but it's worth it to me. It's worth it because I love what that potentially brings, and and this is a league that I really firmly believe now rewards aggressiveness, and you're going to get caught sometimes. But my problem is, and this uh, stems from, I think, the first game in which he started to have some real problems again with losing the puck 
was the avalanche goal in Colorado where he attempted to take out McKinnon in the neutral zone on his side of the ice. And he missed completely and got beaten. And now it's, it's basically a free for all. And the Avs scored on Wednesday night against Phoenix or against the coyotes. I should say he made a bad play at his own blue line last night. It's towards the end of the period, and you just have to get that puck in. Like, there's nothing you're going to do with that puck at that point that's going to be great. You just have to get the puck uh, to Brodeen or get it in. Puck's deep, my my man. (laughs) The old cliche. Matthew right now doesn't seem to understand that. And, And so if he makes a mistake in the offensive zone as a result of his enthusiasm because he brings something there, I'm going to say, okay, cool. You know what? Too bad, but cool. But it's the mistakes he's making that are truly defensive mistakes that are unnecessary. And and I would call them unforced errors. And just so I'm perfectly clear again, I am not advocating scratching him, okay? I'm talking about what I think the conversation with his coaches should be. The unforced errors, especially on his side of the ice, bother me. And I don't think it's a lot to ask him to, to clean those up. So mm-hmm. I think that there's a, because I, I'm with you, like he brings a lot of things that I really like. And I'm, I agree completely. I think he's well liked. I love the fact that that he definitely showed a lot of self-awareness in the quote that you played at the outset of this show. So there's a lot of things I really like and, and embrace. And I also think the fact that, that he plays um, defensive partnered with his good friend, Brodeen, who is as sound as they come, helps him a ton and gives him the ability to make plays that are probably considered risky. But there's a difference in my opinion between risky plays and dumb plays. And mm-hmm. I think it's the dumb plays that right now, like ASAP have to be cleaned up. Cause I don't think they're necessary. I don't think trying to hit McKinnon in neutral is worth the trade-off of whoops. I missed. And now, and now basically a forward is stuck back in my position and is completely overmatched by a team like the avalanche i think the risk reward is kind of the best way to sum him up i mean he's a risk reward player um kevin fiala to a degree is a bit of a risk reward player different positions forward and defenseman but also in that same vein and when when i'm looking at what he's been doing for the most part this year he's shooting the puck a hell of a lot more um he's starting in the offensive zone a lot more he's doing a lot more things that i think are rewarded than are risky and I understand that it's easy to to point to, you know, the, the the bad thing that happened last night against Vegas and say like, oh, we can't have that. And then obviously there's more examples, as you point out, it's not just Vegas. It, it's happened before this season. It's happened last season. And when you get into the postseason, you really can't have situations like that, right? Like that, that if, if they're going to get them out, I guess get them out now. Um, but yeah, I, I think in that. general, and I don't think you're disputing this either, by the way, I, I think in general, the coaching staff and and the players know the kind of player he is, and I believe the rewards out, outweigh the risks. Um, mm-hmm. There was a point in his career where I didn't think so. I, I thought the risks honestly outweighed the reward, uh, but I think he's turned himself into a damn good player. And to be honest, you're going to have to start extension talk with him this summer if you are going to keep him long term. Yep. Uh, he has one more year on his contract after this one, so if you want to start that extension talk without him being a, an official UFA two summers from now, you have to start that conversation now. And with money being so tight... And with him having, it, I think, a, a very damn good season so far, nine points in 13 games, and again, shooting the puck a ton, playing a, playing a bunch of minutes, um, that it's going to cause another conundrum for, for the Wild. But in general, I do think his reward outweighs the risk. If you can only keep one player between these two, Declan Goff, Kevin Fiala or Dumba, who do you extend? Fiala. Um, I think Fiala is the more likely player to be uh, the player that would be smarter to extend. Actually, I think it's more likely they'd extend Dumba over Fiala. um, If I was, if you put me in in the management side of the, of the Minnesota wild right now in their brain trust, but Kevin Fiala is more rare. Uh, You need natural goal scores. And to be honest, um, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Kalen Addison is, is going to be a similar version to what Matt Dumba is, right? Like Kalen Addison is supposed to be an offensive first defenseman. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's basically ready to play in the NHL right now. So you have your plug-and-play player right there. Um, And Fiala's game is hard to find, and they're both in that same risk-reward vein as we just earlier talked about, but I keep Kevin Fiala. 
Um, and I know I'm more biased because I like him a lot more, and I, I think he's an important player to this team, but I think his contributions are greater than Matt Dumba's contributions. Oh, boy. That's a tough it's one tough, for me. It's tough, though. Yeah, I could be because, talking to either. Right, because if if Dumba can clean up the dumb the dumb plays, no pun intended, um, he's got a skill set that's really hard to find, too. Now, Fiala is a goal scorer, w- which is hard to find as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's no question Dumba is liked more by the team and pr- probably in the room. And that's yep. just a guess, but I feel that way. That's a tough one. Um, okay. I got a question for you and I want to know if this is something to even bring up and be concerned about, or if it's the latest segment of, we all have 11 and 20 PTSD, which means Suter and Parisi PTSD. Um, this team won easily on Wednesday against a Coyotes team that we all agree stinks, but yeah, that's fine. I mean, you beat them. So that's great. Uh, but they stink. You then came out last night. And despite the fact that Dean said that he liked the team start, the team start stunk last night. It wasn't good. Um, Dumba had the key, the key mistake because you came back and scored two third period goals and fell short because of the third goal. But did, did you put any credence in the game that the wild played because they definitely in some ways played an old school man there's not much there or is that the ptsd talking because it's also bound to happen that on back-to-backs at times Mm -hmm. and and you know throughout the course of a long season unfortunately those type of games especially on the road probably are going to take place yeah, I, I don't have PTSD necessarily from that game. Um, Vegas is a good team. They got off to a slow start, but are starting to get hot again. Um, and yeah, you're on the heels of a back-to-back. Uh, you you rallied nicely in the third period. You made it a one-goal game after being down 3-0 um, after 40 minutes, so I appreciated that. Uh, but in general, no, I don't, I don't have PTSD from that game. I think Vegas is still a better team than Minnesota is, um, and they're still honestly not even fully 100% healthy, which I think is scary. I'll go through this um, in a second because you're right. Yeah, because Vegas Vegas looks damn good, and uh, you know I was, as you know, I was watching the Vegas Golden Knights broadcast last night, and oh, they yeah. said the first period was their best first period they've played all season long, but and which is could be accurate. I obviously haven't watched a ton of Vegas Golden Knights hockey, but I can obviously make the case that that was the worst period the Minnesota Wild played all season. Not just first worst period in general. The Wild had played all season was the first twenty minutes of that game. It so was, was it really agree. was it was it Vegas imposing their will? Yeah, to a degree, a little bit, but was also Minnesota just being completely flat for twenty minutes? I think that honestly outweighs what Vegas brought that night. Yeah, I was going to say w- when Dean said that the start was fine, I was like, "What are you talking about, man? Yeah. That start was not fine. That it start looked bad." The Golden Knights last night, okay, Declan, were uh-huh. were without, and this is why. Look, it's one game, and, and I do think that this is a very different Wild team than we've seen the past, you know, mm-hmm. three years. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights last night were were without Mark Stone, Max Pacioretty, William Carlson, defenseman Zach Whitecloud, William Carrier, who's a nice player, and Alex Martinez took a Duhame skate oh to the God. face, which was awful yeah. in the first period and, and was lost. Alex Tuck is now in Buffalo uh, in the Eichel trade, and they started their backup goalie. So there is a case to be made with that list that the wild should have shown far more. Um, there's, there's two things. There's two things I'm not going to pass judgment on yet. Okay. Okay. What one is when the wild has bad games, the Kraken game, bad game, right? This game, not a great game. When the wild has bad games, I'm not going to go to the PTSD route yet because, because I do contend that this team feels different. And I think that they work hard and I think that they're led by people who can lead um, and so there's just going to be some games where you don't play well. And until that becomes a collection and a, a uh, reoccurring theme, I'm going to hold off on passing any judgment about when they don't play well. So that's one. The okay. second thing is, and they tried to do it again last night and came short. This team thus far has played, has seven come from behind wins to lead the entire league. Last night, it was almost well, not close, but it it could have been could have eight. Happened. It could yeah. have been eight. They they certainly had opportunities uh, to tie this game late with uh, Talbot pulled. It didn't. That is cause for concern, but I don't know that that I don't know that that's going to be the theme yet. So like that could also change. 
Um, so th those are two things that I'm very much willing right now to be wait and see. Like the come from behind wins are fun and they they've been cool. If we're into December and that's continuing and it's like, we got to come from behind again, that is ultimately going to get to be a problem. But I don't know that that's going to be the theme of the entire season and trying to say it's going to be probably is not fair. So those are two things that I am very much in wait and see mode on. Yeah, you you, you can't really put too much stock in, well, just because they're coming back all the time, that that's the normal because it's not. Um, as, as fun as those comebacks have been and as impressive I've been by this team coming back, it's not going to be every, every single time. Um, I think their willingness to fight in the third period says a lot about the team. And sometimes third period, even fourth quarter stats in football can be a little bit misleading because it's indicative on the situations. Uh, but I think in general with your eye test, you've seen this team play very well in the third period and not have a lot of quit in them. It's really easy for them to roll over. Um, and they have yet to really show that they've rolled over. I think that I think that's my biggest takeaway from the loss was, I mean, for 66%, 75% of this game, the Wild looked like crap but they still found almost a way to win the game. And and good teams overcome crappy situations to still find ways to win games. Yep. And the fact that they were almost able to pull it off and the fact that they're off to a good start, I didn't really take that loss last night as like, oh, down the dumps and here we go again. It's just like, hey, it's a loss. It's lost to a good team. You're on the heels. You're on the road. Um, it, it's it's nothing to really panic about necessarily. No one was injured. It is what it is. And, and in general, I thought their fight in the third period said a lot about the team. Yeah, and... I think if they're playing like this, if they're if they continue to, to have to come back in the third period of games and we're into December, it's a problem. Because then it's like you can't – this. if you take this into the springtime and, and the playoffs, it's going to be a problem. But we're so early yet that, that I'm not convinced that this is going to be them. I think that they're a good team. I don't think they're a great team. I think that they are a good team. Uh, and they're certainly a competitive team. Um and they need to they need to turn the page here and start to win games. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not saying blowing teams out, but I am saying you take a first period lead and you keep that lead. I think that's fair. Last thing I want to talk about with you is the power play. <sighs> the power play last night was 0 for 6. They had two five on threes in the second period. Now the yeah. first the first was 14 seconds. So that's not really fair. But the this, second yeah. came right after, and it was 139. That is an eternity not to score a goal. And then at the end of the game, Kaprizov got tripped, and the Wild, with the net empty, went six on four and looked helpless, looked terrible. I will defer to you because you, you have been, uh, I think, raising the red flag about the power play from the outset, and I yeah. was not. Okay, I'll listen. What would you do? The floor is uh, yours. I would. I don't want to take away Zuccarello and Caprisa because they have an insane amount of chemistry. But if if one of them doesn't start being aggressive and and stop being deferring, 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 like the tic tac toe playoff goal uh, or or power play goal, excuse me, against the Coyotes, where it's just behind the net, behind the net, and then Caprisa wraps it around. I mean that that's a cool looking play but even Dean's like yeah we don't really draw that up that was completely those two which is a fun goal to see but also it's yeah that's not really how that's gonna work for us um I would take one of those two off uh I just would I I, I think there's too many horse too many cooks in the kitchen basically on that first unit so you take one of those use. two off I take one of those two I prize Zuccarello what? too I wouldn't take yeah, the I wouldn't take off, the... off your top yeah. top power play yep I agree. um you and do what? I would put him on the second unit, and then I would elevate someone else. I mean, is, is Dumba was Dumba on the first unit last night? Nope, yeah. he's the second power play guy. It's a Spur, Spurgeon Fiala on the points, and then the first the first line is Erickson Eck, um, uh, Kaprizov, Zuccarello. You, you when they basically you basically got two minutes plus of five on three time yesterday, and you had like three shots on goal. Like that is. Yep. It's unacceptable. And also, like, nothing, no high danger shots, just like trying to jab away garbage goals and putting pucks in front of the net. Like, when you're, to me, it's pretty inexcusable. It's like bases loaded, nobody out when you don't cash in a five on three power play like that. I, I think it's very similar to use that comparison. And in general, I just think the power play not being able, like, if you were, if they weren't going to score right there, I think that was the right. I'm like, oh, they're not going to win this damn game. Like, if you can't figure out a way to score five on three on the power play, and, you know, I don't like to get too down in the X's and O's of power plays because I'll be honest, I just, I don't know. 
I, I, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to also, and, and as, as much as I do pretend and, and BS my way around a lot of other takes, I'm not going to give an X's and O's report on why the power play should be doing this or shouldn't be doing that because I, I simply don't have the brain power for that. But in general, there's too many good players on the top unit, I think. And in general, it's just it's not working. Like look at look at all these look at look at look at all these players that aren't being able to score goals. Your power play is still well below league average. You're at 18 percent. League average is over 20 percent. You're 19. And when you have that many players yep. on on your top power play unit, you got to figure out a way to be successful. You have to. I think you're right. I think it's a the primary problem is the amount of guys that want to defer. Everybody wants to defer, which is where I'm in lockstep with you. Dumba wouldn't care. Nope. Get the howitzer, baby. Get the howitzer, right? So last night, too, uh, Kirill, two shots the entire game. So the last two games, three shots. Now, he missed the net again a couple of times, which has started to sort of bug me. But um, mm-hmm. but but the forward on the wild with the most shots in the entire game last night, Zuccarello with four, which is absolutely shocking because he loves to pass <laughs> the puck. But I, I think you're right, and, and you know we've gone down this path before. I would get Dumba out there with the first group and five on three. There are empty lanes like his shot. His shot is great. Um, I don't think taking Fiala off the point hurts you one bit. So, so like he can, he can take Zuccarello's place. I think you're right. Um, Let me also say this because we saw the golden Knights do this and I loved it. And I think I, during the course of the the, uh, telecast on Valley Sports North, which of course you don't watch, but I did. Nope. West Walls did a great job of pointing this out repeatedly. Okay. The Vegas Golden Knights, one of the keys to them holding the wild 0 for 6 on the power play was the pressure their forwards apply immediately up high. Okay. I love that I because love that you know what down, it yeah. does? Because that to me, okay. If so, Wes's point was. If they're going to do that, you have to move the puck very quickly down low. Like, it's got to go, go, go. You can't be like, you can't, because the pressure is going to come at you. But what I love about the strategy that the Golden Knights employ is putting the pressure on you to move the puck does not, like, mean it's going to create a scoring chance or, or a great opportunity. Because there's also a high chance that the guy being pressured will screw up, right? So... This is why I said aggressive penalty kills are my favorite thing and it can create offense. And it did a couple of times for the golden Knights. It can create offense. And so if I am the wild, I take a page from that book and I loved that pressure. Uh, But I am, but I totally agree. Seattle tomorrow night, get Dumbo on, on the point. People are going to say you're nuts. You know, how can you separate after we saw that goal against the Coyotes? You can't separate Zuccarello and Kaprizov. I think you're I would right about that. I would. I'd do it. Too many people deferring. Oh, and last point too. Seattle Kraken. Embrace the losses. Oh God, I love. Did you game. see them last night post game? The quotes. I didn't see the quotes. No. Kraken's talking about we need to do more. You know, it's it's tough when we lose, but we need to. They're talking like they're supposed to be good. The media convinced you because the Golden Knights were good. Like tomorrow night, embrace the L. Don't care about the game. Your care expansion about the tra- takes weird. I don't, I don't no, my it. expansion take is right on. You're in crack. You think Kraken it. fans give a crap? Kraken fans are thrilled to be watching a pro winter sport. They don't care if their team uh, gets drilled and they'll take the draft pick. Embrace the L's. The Kraken are talking like they're the wild. Well, we've got to bear down and do more. No, you don't. You got to lose games. Lose the games. My expansion not just, take is right on. The Golden Knights were the odd man. The, the Golden Knights are, are the anomaly, not the norm. And First your point PL. of defending the, or ripping the Kraken after we got comments of why these two buffoons wearing Kraken gear after the Coyotes win. Uh, number one, Judd and I just like hockey. So I, I think hold it's on. okay for us to wear. Hold, uh-oh. Hold, hold on. Oh, got? no, keep, keep talking. I just uh, got my. Your Kraken gear. Yeah, your, your hoodie's over it. Get your hoodie over. There you go. And look, look at that great logo. I'm all about wearing nice go logos. Go Kraken, put up a fight. Go Kraken, get your draft pick right. Lose the oh, hockey yeah. game, let the wild kick your ass. Who cares? Who cares? You got a winter sport. Pass shoot score.